This episode brought to you by these awesome patrons and members. JD Micro is at it again with the ROM XE for the Apple IIe. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The ROM XE is a replacement ROM set for your Apple IIe computer, which gives a ton of new features. For a complete rundown, you can check out my previous videos in the card or the description. The difference here is that this is the version designed specifically for the Apple IIe, so let's check it out. The ROM XE is a supercharged replacement for your Apple IIe ROM set with a wide range of enhancements. The features are nearly identical to its earlier brother, the ROM XC, so much so that they now share a manual, one that is actually now very complete since our last visit. So what does the ROM XE have under the hood? First, it stores up to 15 ROM images and presents them for selection via an on-screen menu system. These ROM images can be updated with the hardware still in the machine by using the ROMX boot menu or by running the ROMX disk utility from the utility disk. The firmware is upgradable using the same process. Worried about interference with your no-slot clock? Well, you don't have to because ROMXE comes standard with an onboard clock and battery backup. The features don't stop there. ROM XE includes a daughter board and link cable to replace the video mapping ROM, allowing you to choose between 32 custom text fonts. You can also choose to associate fonts with specific ROM images. Want more power? Okay, ROM XE can also hold snapshots of DOS, ProDOS, or even applications, allowing for instant booting. It even comes with a few images preloaded for your convenience. Installation is a snap. In my standard 2E, the process involves removing the CD, EF, and video ROMs, then installing the ROM XE replacements. Finally, you connect the video ROM to the ROM X with the ROM link cable. The process varies for different machines, so ensure you read the instructions for your model. While we're here, I wanted to touch a little bit on the menu system. I described it in my previous video, but there are some updates to discuss, and I want to review the image linking portion of that, since I don't think I detailed that well enough. On the end of each image, you can place certain ampersand suffixes that tell ROM XE how to handle the selected image. You can use ampersand D on a system ROM image to tell it which disk image to load. This one tells it to use the DOS image in slot F. And the ampersand T option tells a system ROM which text font to use. In this case, the Apple IIe unenhanced set. The ampersand L option tells a DOS software image which language you want from which slot, provided you've loaded a language into one of the slots already. The ampersand A option tells a software image what accelerator speed to use. Zero means native speed, going all the way up to F for fastest, with each step's meaning depending on the accelerator in the machine. There's a table in the instructions to guide you on these meanings. Ampersand S tells a software image that it must use a specific system ROM image. Here it's telling it to use the enhanced ROM in slot one. The ampersand S options can also be chained, as you see here. The built-in real-time clock also has a nifty clock trim feature, allowing you to fine-tune the clock to keep more accurate time. The tool for this is found on the utility disk. If you have the Euro or International version of the 2E, you'll want to check your main board to see if you need the ROM link riser option. Some versions of the logic board place the RAM too close to the ROM socket, so the riser cable won't fit. One of the coolest new details is the use of the keyboard switch on the Apple IIc and International 2E machines. Flipping the switch allows you to access the second bank of text fonts built in. If you have the North American 2E design, you'll have to do some soldering work to get easy access to those extra fonts. The manual doesn't have the explicit instructions, but if you know how to solder, you can attach a switch here to gain that function. This just in. During the production of this video, Dean added more information to the instructions about the font ROM switch on machines that require it. He has also created and uploaded an instruction guide on adding fonts to the video ROM board, including schematics for a programming adapter. Now back to your regularly scheduled episode. One factor I struggled with at the beginning is that the DOS and software images on here are not disk images. They're actually RAM snapshots. This can cause some confusion if you're expecting a file system after boot and it's just not there. The ROM XE fully supports the Zip chip, the Fast chip, and the Ultra Warp. 
As you saw before, each ROM image can also have the accelerator settings changed individually, so productivity tools can be super fast, while the game image can run at normal speed. I have a fast chip, so let's see this in action. The current version 1 of the ROM X software works on all Apple IIc and IIe computers, but will be the last version to support unenhanced IIe's and machines without 80 column cards. When version 2 is released, it will have a new menu to take advantage of mouse text and 80 columns. Hopefully this will address several of the concerns I had with the ROM X menu. My comment in my previous video about the confusing choice of using description instead of name for a bank was acknowledged by JD Micro, but they left it called description for consistency with previous versions. Besides, they handed to me an upcoming feature that will use the control in shortcut, so they can't just go changing things around. I also previously stated that having some of the settings hidden under the info menu was confusing. Jeff and Dean hinted that they may change this menu in a future version to say image info and settings to get rid of that confusion. I also lamented last time about the lack of a power on reset menu option. This was simply a design choice and not in any way an oversight. Jeff and Dean prefer the ROM X to just start up and get out of the way and I can't fault them for that. There is a trick though to getting back into the menu while the machine is running if you like. And here is the magic incantation to do that. Overall, I think the ROM XE is just as nifty as its predecessors, and packs a great deal of value into a small package. You can pick one up at the Reactive Micro Store or directly from Jeff and Dean if you're in Australia. Links in the description. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. You can support the museum on Patreon or by snagging some merch at jcm-1.com. Links in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.